All right, so this might be my greatest test yet, making an interesting introduction about this, the Volkswagen Passat estate hybrid. Go again, you say you want your freedom. Well, who am I to keep you down? about the Passat is you know exactly what you're getting right you're not buying into lols or fun you're not buying into idiosyncrasy or personality you're buying into fuss free rationality of the most benign kind it's a sort of car that you get excited about if you're in passive aggressive local Facebook groups that like to have lively discussions about parking transgressions and dog poo so I'm driving the estate today as it happens but everything from the rear hole forward applies applies to the saloon. And so in the true spirit of this particular vehicle, I'm gonna jump right in with the metrics first. The reasons why the Passat is a perspicacious purchase. But just quickly before we get into all that, please hit subscribe, go to Vanarama for mint car deals, and who knows, you might even find your... So, metrics. Oh, hang on, I can't really do that in the car. What an idiot. An idiot in a new Volkswagen. Wait for it. Imagine. Hey, I got a new car today. Where is it? It's upside down at the dealership. <laughs> Okay, like I said, saloon and estate. You buy the saloon and you get 586 litres of space, which as you can see is a lot compared to other similarly sized saloons, but also the saloon format itself is intrinsically hindered because saloons have a relatively thin flap, which makes it a little bit harder to slide large things through the flap. Personally, I don't understand why all these things aren't liftbacks these days, like the Peugeot 508 is now, or the Audi A5 Sportback. Hey ho. So, as per use, if you want max pract, max practicality, then you get the estate. Not only do you get more actual space, you also get a huge flap at the back through which you can insert large objects. Again though, the Passat has more space than a car of this size generally does. And up here, well, nothing to write to your suburban semi-detached about, but it does a typically adequate job. It has door pockets, they will hold a bottle. It has a damped glove box, it too will hold a bottle. It also has gesture control, which is why when I went for the glove box, you heard that sweeping sound. That wouldn't have worked if I'd actually tried to make it work. It works when you're going for something else, watch. See, not working. The cup holders will hold a relatively large cup, a long distance sort of specification cup, if you will. Headspace is good, even if you've got a sunroof like this car has. Leg space, generous. I'm jumping around a bit, but it has a relatively large secondary glove box down here, although that's not damped. It just sort of falls down. And again, to jump around a bit, it does seem though that Volkswagen has prioritized boot space in this car to the very slight detriment of leg space. Although, as you can see, if Joe plays the clip now of me sitting in the car, there is enough of that. More metrics then. So here are the wheel bases of the cars that I mentioned before, and also this car. As you can see, the Passat has jumped from the top of the list to the bottom. Now it's no big deal. There is still plenty of space in the rear of this car, although it does have a massive and really high transmission tunnel, which will be dead annoying if you sat in the middle of the back row. But it does seem that maybe Volkswagen figured that this was gonna be a car used most often with just the one person in it and lots of stuff in the boot, perhaps. Say, on the motorway. The salesmen are always right, aren't they? I mean, if I bought it, my judgment's bang on, isn't it? So if, if you know, this is the car I've picked, then it's got to be the best thing around. Just a thought. So, to engines and equipment then. To the spec levels, uh, it's got a very good radio, it's ABS braking, electric aerial, electric windows on the front, electrically operated uh, wing mirrors, leather steering wheel, leather gear knob, uh, pollen filter, alloy wheels. 
This car has all those things as standard, apart from the electric aerial. They tend to snap at the car wash, don't they? And the old coat hanger stuck to the top of the roof. Not a strong look these days. But I do feel like we should discuss the infotainment slash stereo situation in this car at this stage. Yeah. So on the one hand, standard Volkswagen infotainment stuff. I can't be bothered to go through it all again, so I'm just gonna play you a clip from another Volkswagen car review that I did quite recently. And the infotainment, right, it's last gen Volkswagen stuff before they went all high tech and took like half a step back in user friendliness. And so it's great, right? So yeah, nice software, whatevs. Although I will point out a couple of things about the software. So this has a drop down menu. It's actually very well thought out. Pull down on the screen from the top, it gives you like navigation announcements, lighting options, stuff that you might want to get to quickly. And if you put your hand anywhere near the screen, you'll get pop-up menus from the bottom that give you shortcuts as well. But there is no volume dial, which is annoying. Volume is always something that you want to be able to adjust quickly. You don't want to be jabbing at a screen to get your volume down. If, for example, you're playing music really loud, more on which in a second. Literally a second, because this car has the worst quality stereo I've heard for a long time. And if you're using wireless Apple CarPlay, which itself is a lovely feature, it cuts out all the time. And so, say you're merrily listening to a day to remember at the appropriate volume, right? It's not going to sound all smooth and relaxing like this. Resentment. It's going to sound more like this. Disgraceful. And the thing is, that sticks out like a, well, a coat hanger aerial in the context of a car that is otherwise unbelievably effective. Crushingly so, to be honest. To sit in a Passat is to be deep in the bowels of pure, humorless logic. Oh, I'm fully freaking out. I just experimented with an unfamiliar acronym in public. BRB, what does it even mean? Be right back. It has the same number of syllables as the acronym. What's the point? But, you know, it's really nice. And it is, of course, more solid than that time that the Terminator and Apollo Creed shook hands. You son of a b And you know, it has clear temperature dials and buttons and stuff. And again, it has the requisite number of holes to store stuff in and put your cups in and that. It's all damped lovely. In fact, there's a good little test here. If this part here, right, this bit of trim where the screen is, if it's finished nicely, which it is in this car, then that is a sign of quality, right? Because not many people are going to feel that or see it, but it's something that goes above and beyond. And that sort of quality and design efficiency extends to the driving experience too. So the driving position is great. It's accommodating. There's lots of adjustment and the visibility all around this thing is dead good. You'll probably notice it's got really thin pillars for a modern car. Like sound quality and sound knob issues aside, it's pure flawless logic. But spec is important in this car. So again, base model is largely fine, although you will be touching the cloth seats. And I think that the little price bump that you get if you go up to an SEL car, that's the second one, is worthwhile. Leather, nicer wheels, tinted windows. It just lifts the car a little bit for not that much extra cash. After that, it gets sporty and to be honest, a little bit better again. R-Line trim is probably the sweet spot for me. 19 inch wheels, nice body kit, softer leather, and once again, not that much extra per month. And also, for me, it actually starts to go downhill from there. That's because, in my opinion, the plug-in hybrid bits subjectively degrade the Passat driving experience. Uh -huh. We'll come back to that in a minute. For now, here's the engine range. Now, it's more classic VW shizzy, bruh. 1.5 TSI petrol and a 2-litre TDI diesel in a few states of tune. Two, two. Put that clip in on purpose because Joe's a Mackham and I knew he wouldn't like doing it. <laughs> That's a Sunderland fan, by the way. I'm a Newcastle fan. But you can only have the 200 horsepower bad boy diesel in an R-Line car. Now, generally, what is left to say about these engines? I'll say some stuff anyways. So say you're doing long distances in this regularly, you're gonna want a diesel and a DSG. And that's because you're gonna get like 50 to 55 miles per gallon, whichever one you get, maybe more, and both the engine itself and the gearbox are more polished and bereft of personality and character than the last thing you listen to on Radio 1.
But my favorite is, as ever, the 1.5 TSI petrol. Not a massive amount of power or pace, right, as you can see, but look at the torque, or more importantly, look at where you get all the torque, all the way down at 1500 RPM. And that makes it feel... Punchy, how's that? It's good, is how it is. But then you get to the plug-in hybrid, which Volkswagen has decided to saddle with a GTE badge. That's right, saddle. GTE, of course, denoting sportiness. This, not sporty. Not one bit. Now, I don't want to dwell on this too much because we're looking at the Passat generally here and not the GTE specifically. But in my view, Volkswagen has created an issue for this car at the product marketing stage. If this had green addenda rather than blue, you would be focusing on the efficiency stuff that you see in front of me here, which is astonishing. Instead, it seems that Volkswagen, probably the product marketing department, has looked at the 0-62 time of this car and decided that it qualifies for GT specification, or GT status rather. Problem is, as with all plug-in electric hybrids, once the battery runs out, which it will, and quite quickly, this is a heavy car being dragged along by a 1.4 litre petrol engine. It's kind of like all the sugar just disappears out of your coffee halfway through the mug. But again, this is a car that makes a huge amount of sense from a tax and cost perspective. And if you're usually using it to commute short distances to work and back, and you can manage the battery effectively, then it does make a lot of sense. It's very efficient when you have electricity and petrol working together. It's very quick, and of course you will get quite a lot of electric only miles. It just jars because the Passat feels like it was designed to be a sporty car in no way. It's a comfortable one, and it's great at that. The ride quality is very mature. It's a little on the firm side, maybe, for this sort of car, and it's definitely negatively affected by wheel choice, so this car is a GTE Advanced, which means it's on 19s, and you can feel them, but it's generally really well settled down, and Kel surprise, it's at its best on the motorway. That's partly because it has speed sensitive steering, which at lower speed swings the car around quite quickly. But then when you get it up to higher speed, motorway speed say, it kind of slackens off a bit. So the car doesn't feel twitchy. It feels more stable. And there is a very good chassis under here though. It's on the MQB platform that the vast majority of Volkswagen Group cars are, Seats and Audis and Skodas included. So it's just had the crap honed out of it. <laughs> it handles with the sort of sturdy and reliable predictability that you would expect exactly from this car. Never fun, but never unruly either. Like a Sam Allardyce team. Don't be fooled by the smile. <laughs> the only real refinement issue I have with this car, because it's all just mechanically so well dampened down, is that there's a lot of whistle from the wing mirrors. It really sticks out. And one more thing on the GTE specifically, aside from the fact that you lose boot space, which I forgot to mention in the metrics bit before, is that the energy recapture system linked to the brakes means that they don't feel that natural. They don't feel very progressive. They almost feel like they're attached to drum brakes. You kind of feel like you really have to press them down to get this car stopping properly. It's an artificial sense of progression. And that's about it, really. This has been some minutes of me telling you stuff that you probably already know about a car that's been doing virtually the same thing since back in 1973. Not much wrong, but not many lols either. And something else obvious for you, most of the other cars that you might be considering in this particular genre will do a similar job, obviously, but they will do it in slightly less good, but slightly more personable fashion than the Passat. If personable is a quality or an attribute that you can actually assign to a car. I'm not sure it is. But just before I go, there is another Volkswagen that I do think is worth mentioning here, and it's this, the Arteon. Now, before you start on this, right, with the comments and that, I know that the Arteon is technically a class up. It's a little bit bigger. It's a little bit more expensive, but it's not that much bigger, nor that much more expensive, really. There is crossover. Crossover in the true sense, not in the automotive sense. We're not going to go all cash kai on you now. Anyway, where was I? Oh yeah, Arteon. So it has the same sensible qualities, the same sense of heft and Volkswagen-ness, but it's more practical because it's a lift back and it has that very elusive quality that the Passat definitely does not have. It has personality. It is, in my opinion, one of the best looking cars on sale today, bar none. So I just think it's worth thinking about that because for me, the Arteon makes the Passat seem, not pointless, that's the wrong word, but it is the car that I would go for instead. 
bagel. Food for thought. We'll leave it there. Thank you for watching. Really hope you enjoyed that. Please have a look at our other stuff. Again, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. It helps us out enormously. And to everybody who makes a nice comment underneath these videos, thank you. I do read them all. It makes a huge difference. It makes me feel warm inside and like I'm doing this for a reason. You could start playing some soppy music now, Joe, and we'll just all enjoy this moment together. I am beautiful, no matter what they say. Words can't bring me down. <laughs> Bye then. <laughs>